All right, Cam this is going. Cameras are blinking. It can't be a good sign. Is this thing on? All right. Uh, <laughs> good evening. I can't see myself. It throws me off. Uh, good. No, no, you're fine. Uh, good. <laughs> good evening, everybody. Welcome to the train wreck that is uh, the Todd Shane Show. The Todd Shane Show, uh, number two fourteen. Though my notes notes say two thirteen. Uh, recorded live, barely on September fifteenth, uh, twenty fourteen. I keep it up, it'll be September 16th. It will be at least, yeah. Oh my God, I just killed the chat room too. Um, <laughs> so I am uh, Todd, and this is my uh, lesser half, Shane. Hello. And we're coming to you live, barely, from uh, Boston, SP TechCon 2014. And we uh, kind of cobbled all this together. Hopefully, it's recording here and recording there, and we're getting sound from here. We spent the last 45 minutes just getting pummeled by technology. I mean, just beating about the head. Is that why you're so ugly? It's uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm well worn at this point, uh, but we we're we're dedicated to this. We're professionals. We weren't going to let it get us down. I only dropped one unfortunate f bomb, uh, and that was on, I almost made it to the end before I you did I that. So next time we have got a good uh, good feeling. Uh, but this is Netcast two fourteen. We don't have the flag back here, but again, this is all uh, thanks to Rackspace. So go on to uh, SharePoint.rackspace.com. All kinds of fun stuff there. Easter eggs and video games and even some actual content, I think. Yeah. Maybe a thing or two about SharePoint there. So go to SharePoint.rackspace. I might give them a different Rackspace URL next week. Not right for this week. Oh, Maybe next week. The anticipation. We have a lot of things to talk about that we're going to talk about next week. That, that comes <laughs> up later. Uh, this week we're going to talk a lot about next week. It's going to be a good time. Uh, yeah. Uh, for, so for production notes, last week went pretty well. You weren't, uh, weren't in on that, so that's part of the reason it went so well. But I rebuilt my netcasting box and put Windows 8.1 on it and loaded all the drivers. And last week was the inaugural recording, and it went like gangbusters. It was great. So uh, if I ever get back home again and do another recording from there, I think it'll go well. That's what, three or four weeks, you know? At least a month, yeah. Some, sometime in 2017, I'm thinking I'm going to be back home on Monday night. Your kids will miss you. <laughs> that's, that's not true. They like their mom like that. Um, the cat will miss you? Mm -hmm. Snoopy? <laughs> Snoopy the cat. <laughs> not Snoopy. He's got a lot of personality. Uh, so the production went pretty well. I got it out a little late, but it didn't go too badly. But we were talking about some stuff on the way here. We were, though the, the execution of this will bear no evidence of this, but we actually did talk about this ahead of time. Our topics, a little preparation, though there'll be no signs of that. But I think at some point here in the next month or so, I'm going to try Google Hangout. I think I'm going to do it. I think, I mean, I've done them for work a few times. Uh, Laura Rogers does hers on Wednesday afternoons. Never and, heard her. Yeah. Nah, I mean, hers have never had a single issue, so I don't yeah. know why you'd switch to a platform without <laughs> issues. Why do we talk about things that didn't blow up? What, uh, what am I thinking? Yeah, so the, the main reason, that, well, two main reasons I was thinking about going to the Hangouts. Number one is they'll let me broadcast live on YouTube, which would be nice. Ustream's not bad. It's treated me well. But YouTube, everybody knows how to use YouTube. Your yep. kids know how to use YouTube. My kids know how to use YouTube. If you've got any kind of devices like Roku devices or anything, they can stream YouTube. It would be the same URL for the live streams, the recordings, all that YouTube slash Todd Clinton that cast. And just YouTube is the thing. Yep. So um, so that's not like a good idea. And then with the Hangouts, I can bring other people in. So you can get more me? Just say it. Say it. You want to bring me more. You want to bring it's me already, house more. It's already just too say it. Just Don't say touch it. me. I feel dirty. Uh, there's already too much. You. Yes. Well, oh, that text stuff has got to you. It's. It's. I feel. I just. I'm. You know. Little. Little. little gross. Hanging out. Yep. Um, so I think we're going to try that. So again, if I'm ever back in my basement, we'll have to do a couple of test runs. I actually tried it this weekend, and it seemed to work pretty well. The lag was kind of rough. About 30 seconds of lag. Ustream always felt like 10 to 20. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see. We'll give that a try. I think that'll be, uh, really good. The other thing that I might do is I've been threatening for a couple of years now to move my blog and everything to SharePoint 2013, the world's premier blogging platform. And not only do I have my blog and all that on SharePoint 2010, but I've also got all the files for my netcast, all those the, the feed files and the video files and the video files. I have a SharePoint 2013 server built. I've been kind of testing that, so I might move that stuff over. And that will give me some other options for posting new line video. Well, as soon as SharePoint 2016 comes out, you should definitely get a SharePoint all 2013. Over all over it. You don't want to jump too soon on these things. You don't want to. You don't want to do that. So I'll be the devil's advocate. Why not go straight to Office 365? Why not embrace the Kool Aid? Um, so honestly, I haven't checked. I don't know what Office 365 would do for me. Part of it is I've got a custom domain, several custom domain names. So I don't know if I can do all that. 
because uh, I've got like, you know, www.tyclint.com is my illustrious blog. Everybody knows that. And then all my <laughs> blog. <laughs> all my media is at media.tyclint.com. Mm -hmm. And I've got a couple other ones that have stuff out on them. The other thing is I've got every, well, maybe not every, but most of my video and audio files over the last five years. And so that media thing is huge. It's, storage media. Yeah, 60, 70 gigs, something like that. Interesting. I hadn't thought about it at all. That's why I figured I'd ask right now. I would lie. <laughs> Put me on the spot. That's awesome. Thanks, man. Guest host. <laughs> Guest. Uh, and because, and this is a good, good opportunity for me to, oh, jeez. God, the recording <laughs> oh, dude. There's uh, no way else works anymore. No. Because of working at Rackspace and all that, I get free cloud servers. Right. So all of my stuff is hosted on Rackspace. And I just feel like I've got more control, and I get to try our products. And for the, for good and bad, we've found some some issues over the years, but it gives me an opportunity to get our own stuff that way. And yeah. I just feel like I can go in because that's worked so well for me in the past. I don't need to remind anybody of the great blog crash of 2012. <laughs> the great blog crash of 2012. I, I that might be pushing it a tad. Uh... The tremendous. The internet wept. <laughs> that's that's how I describe it. Internet wept. That. That. <laughs> that's how I describe that. The internet wept. You might have wept. Oh, I did more. <laughs> you think you think the stuff I said when we couldn't get this on the air was bad? You should have heard me when I found out what happened on my blog. That Peruvian donkey again. Oh boy, it. Uh, I, I can't say. Um, yeah. So, but that's kind of why I get to use our cloud servers. I get to use SharePoint, and it is again the, the world's premier, the world's leading blogging platform. Is SharePoint? I hear, I hear WordPress is uh, trying trying to sneak in. Good luck price. to them unseating SharePoint as a blogging platform. It's Sisyphusian. Sisyph yes, Sisyphus, the guy that rolled the rock up the hill. Yes, uh, that's the kind of task that'll be. Did I come off looking smart? <laughs> did that work? Uh, did I knock it out of the park? Yeah, you did. Uh, everyone right now is quickly googling. How do you mispronounce Sisyphus? <laughs> Sisyphus. S Sisyphus. Yeah. yeah. Dang. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll probably be moving that stuff over. I've been playing with that a little bit. Of course, I covered up my notes. I can't tell. Uh, <laughs> don't what's press any more buttons. Yep. People are hearing it click. I don't know what that is. It's my trick knee. In the chat room, they're talking about a clicking sound. Um, that one? <laughs> it might actually be Lori typing. Oh, it could be. That <laughs> could be. Because we're not brave enough to type. No, no. Um, I see your clicks. Material what? Clicks. He, he, oh. All the time. It's like, what's wrong with you, kid? Thought maybe he had something wrong with his hip. <laughs> Can't ever sneak up on you. <laughs> yeah. Inappropriate. Uh, yeah. All right. So that was uh, for production notes. That's uh, the bulk of all that. So big changes coming, hopefully. Uh, good changes, even. Well, speaking of good changes, uh, they're stuck with me for the next two weeks. Yeah, we should go ahead and talk about that now. Uh, in, in three. You know, three if you got this week. So this week we're in, at SP TechCon. Austin. Austin. Next week I'm going to be in Chicago. I've been invited to a little roundtable thing. We know that Microsoft is taking TechEd and the SharePoint Conference and Mac and MMX and uh, all those, or Mix, that's what it was, Mix, putting them all in one big Uber, super Uber conference. Yep. It's going to be in Chicago the first week of May, I think, with the May... Something through the something. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. yeah, those days, yeah, definitely. At McCormick Place there in Chicago. And a few of us have been invited to go ahead of time and kind of check the place out. They're going to talk to us about Tech Ed and all that. They've done this for some other of the conferences before. And I was fortunate enough to be invited to that. So I will be there next Monday night. You're kind of a big deal, pal. And that's what I keep telling people. And the world is slow to embrace the uh, the big deal, big dealness that I am. But uh, so I'm going to be doing that, and Laura Rogers, I believe, is going to be there as well. Oh, Laura, so, Laura, nice. Uh, we'll be doing that. Oh, Naomi as well. Naomi, that's right. Naomi will be there. Uh, Jack in the chat room. It's, it's going to be like maybe so everyone got in my ass. How this went? So maybe yeah. So so it appears that everybody <laughs> but you two got invited, uh, and it sounds like half of the chat room will be there. So we, we should do a show. I you should do it from there. Uh, I might entertain that. We'll have to see. I didn't realize so many people. Uh, we're going to uh, going to be there. Yeah, well, I'll be Plan B if not. Plan C, really. <laughs> no show is Plan B. Yeah, just just cancel the whole damn thing. So the problem now is Shane has my credentials. So whether I want him to or not, he can log in. And uh, I'm surprised. Uh, I posted in the chat room last week so people can log in. So I think most of the room has them. <laughs> Perfect. Well, it couldn't be any worse than when I go on and actually try to do something. So more power to him. Oh, so Jack is not going. Only 17 people going. Aww, it seems so intimate. So even Jack was too good, he turned him down. 
It's like, nah, Monday nights isn't like dancing with the Bears or something like It's uh, football. We're supposed to be watching football right now. should be actually. I mean, Philadelphia, and I forget who that playing. Colts. And the Colts, right? I got LaShawn McCoy really on my uh, fantasy team. Nothing will all do. Oh, so Lori's uh, keeping up with nothing. There you go. We'll take score updates as you go. We'll do like Sports Center. Yep. No, because you know what? We'll get sued. The NFL doesn't allow a rebroadcast. We are already discussing an NFL game, so we are already invited. Yeah, to the NFL <laughs> we room. are. And at dinner tonight, or I guess in your room tonight, we were discussing the NFL game. Oh, we are so that Once they get done with all the other stuff they got going on. So, but the good news is maybe we can get uh, Roger Goodell to hide the evidence of this. Well, so we can. I just say, you know, it's kind of like, um, you know, you're a family guy, guy right? Yeah. You know, when uh, Mayor West built the uh, the gold dig em statue to uh, <laughs> change the subject, right? So we're, we're doing the same type of, we're going to do the same right. thing. We could string Todd Quinn's net cast up and get rid of all this Adrian Peterson Ray Rice stuff. <laughs> They're going after you, man. Oh. Well, it's been a good run. It's been, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I'll be in Chicago next week. And then the week after that, I'm going to be in Stockholm, Sweden. And so. Is that way? I think that. I forget which. Yeah. Uh, so, the Chicago is kind of doable. The Stockholm thing, it's gonna, it would be at like 2 o'clock in the morning or something. I'm just not that dedicated. <laughs> and I need my beauty sleep. 213 shows in, and all of a sudden mm-hmm. now you're not dedicated? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I need, yeah, so I, I will be ha- having partied hard the whole time that I was there. You know how I get all drunk and crazy. And yeah, them waters, table. you turn the waters down. Yep, I just slam them, just, it's, it's my job. Brought to you by the sun. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then you'll get to do that one also. So uh, apologies ahead of time for 2.15 and 2.16. You guys don't tune in, I understand, my, it's okay. My viewership will plummet. It will. And, uh, it'll be, uh, so, so that's what we got going on for the next one. Uh, What's the next one? What's the next topic next, there? So, yeah, we'll move to the topics here. So this was a, <laughs> one that I, I meant to talk about last week and got busy with other stuff. But I built a couple of servers for some stuff at work. I was actually working. So that's that, that, that right itself is, is noteworthy. I, I, I'll put it in here. <laughs> uh, so I was installing some SharePoint servers. And I don't know how this all happened, but I had several servers in a farm, and one of them didn't have everything installed. So like I tried to activate search, and I used uh, the commandlets for search, you know, set S, the enterprise, whatever, and tried to assign some roles to the server, and it said, can't start that service instance, it doesn't exist on the server. Very rude, very rude. That's crazy. Because, I mean, it, and so I went into the services on server, and you know, all the servers in the farm had a big long list. This one had like five things at the top. And I'm like, wow, that is crazy because I installed them all the same way with the same media. So it wasn't like a foundation ISO slipped in there somehow, <laughs> right. you know, shh, edged in. And so I spent a little bit of time, got uh, got on the chat room or on the Twitter and asked about it. And Trevor Seward, uh, not please Trevor, he is not in the chat room tonight. Uh, but Trevor Seward, in his blog is the SharePointFarm.com, I believe. He had the exact fix for it. Apparently when I installed it or something, all the services didn't get installed, so install SP service did it all. So the script that we use when we build farms, yep. that's one of the lines in there. Yep. I used that script, somehow something hiccuped on that one server, ran uh, install SP service, no parameters, no nothing, and just zipped everything up and it was off to the races. So then I was able to move search and activate everything. Now, are you having fear of this server for the next five years? You know, I'm not. Because um, I, I did some other poker run. In, in the troubleshooting for that, I did some other poker run, and everything looked fine. And that was kind of the thing. I was expecting to see a bunch of bad stuff. And I was on the verge of just pulling it out and reinstalling it. Right. Because I had two or three other servers, and it was not going to be a big deal. Um, but then he gave me this thing, and it just worked. Like, there was no errors in the OS log, event log, or event viewer wasn't screaming at me. So it seemed happy. Just the stuff was there. Hmm. So uh, somehow, I don't know. Um, yeah, because you even cut and paste the scripts. It's not like you fat fingered anything, right? Yeah, I just downloaded it. I've got it on my yeah. blog. So, yeah, it was uh, interesting. It reminds me of the old days. Remember 2007, 2010? If you didn't have enough RAM, it would just skip steps during the install process. I don't know if you guys remember, right? It was like a throwback Thursday here, but that thing would just <laughs> jump over steps. It, Went there, wouldn't complain. Was happily, yeah. Stuff with time out. It, it was for, and the, when we saw it was we build these one box wonders. We'd have yep, SQL absolutely. and SharePoint, and SQL stuff would time out, and the installer would just happily skip right on by. Yeah, just stuff would be missing, files would be gone. It would skip the security. And apparently, writing back to AD was really a big deal, right? That was one of its favorite things. Like, yeah, there's no one in the security groups. We can create them. And then that's fine. Yeah, carry on. Saw that for the SharePoint 2010 beta. We saw that all the time because yeah. that was when we were. I can't even remember what like the memory 
boundary was when we were there. But I remember you and I teaching a 2007 class, lamenting all the RAM that SharePoint 2010 was going to take, and how there was just no way. For Eight them to whole gigs, right? Something crazy like that. So the first uh, the first couple of times we installed it, we might have been a little, little skinny on the RAM, yeah. and, and saw that way. I do remember. So yeah, it was kind of like that. It's just that one thing to get done. Now the beast got 32 gigs of RAM, dual SSDs. Still not fast enough, but no, <laughs> no. at least we got enough RAM. We don't skip steps. Yeah, and so tomorrow we're doing our upgrade session, and that's when my laptop will explode, and it has dual SSDs, 32 gigs. Oh, RAM. there will be. A... So this is the joys of presenting. You know, we've done the upgrade session yeah, 10 times on this version, right? I mean, literally 10 times this version, and so we'll do the test, right? We'll get out tomorrow. We'll practice. We'll do the runs with. Seamless, no problem. You hook a monitor up to that thing, you put that VGA cable in the hole, game over. The laptop gets stage right. My favorite was the first time we did the Tech Ed 2000. <laughs> no, no. I don't remember. But but Shane and I again had practiced it. We had been in the speaker room, had attached the database, walked through everything, and then uh, just detached the database. We're, we're detached it from SharePoint, restored it to SQL, we were good to go. Confident, chests held high, oh. ready to conquer the world. So we did our we did our stick with our stick with the uh, the PowerPoints, we switch over and that database was not attached. And it was it was making up error messages. It was using words that didn't even exist. My so, exactly. And and we had just done it moments before. And my favorite uh, my favorite part of that was Shane's over there typing feverishly. I'm like, all right, I'll go do so I go over and I start doing the next uh, the next set of slides, get to the next point, and I'm like, all right, now we're going to move back to the demo. Shane doesn't even look up. I wouldn't. <laughs> they just go right back to it. I'm like, okay, then. It was awkward for Todd, but I, I, we got it to work. By the end of the thing, I had... And, and do you remember what the fix was? I do. I had to reboot the machine. Yep. So my theory on that is, I think... So that was another one of those horrendous one-box wonders. So SQL and SharePoint. I think that SharePoint cached that database. So we attached it. Upgraded it, detached it, and all those SharePoint processes stayed running. So I think when we tried to attach it the second time, the IDs were the same and all that, and I think it just pooped itself. Yep. I think that's uh, the good. The good news is I had it show up for customers a couple of times, and then issue like, no, this is not. It was slow down. Yep. Stop, stop, stop panicking. Everybody, SQL box. Yep. We got this one. So yep. that was the key. It was well, it could it happen in a multi-server farm? And it was rebooting the SQL box. It was mm -hmm. not rebooting the SharePoint box. Now, I mean, I'm not saying SharePoint still didn't do the caching. But it was always a uh, yeah. SQL server and uh... easy family show. <laughs> so that was that was and that might have been the first time we did that session and it just exploded horribly. It was awesome. So we should have done for tonight. Just talk about the worst moments we've had on stage. Oh, there have been there have been many. Remember the PowerShell for a thousand people, the blue screen. Literally, we said time to start and the yeah, PowerPoint. Blue yeah, that was uh, that was the patching session. The patching? It, it was PowerShell. It, no, it was patching. And it 2009 was and 2009. So it was yeah. so that so now now we got it going down. I mean, this is fun. Yep. So so I started working for SharePoint 911 like the week before the SharePoint conference in 2009. So that was going to be our big coming out party. Not like that. And so we had uh, we had the first session after lunch. So like Bill Gates was our warm up act, yes. if I remember correctly. So we're in this huge room, biggest room I've ever spoken in, yep. since or before. So probably 2,500 people in that room, something like that. It was it was massive. Uh, you're not misremembering the room. No, it was the big room. It was the big room, but that one didn't have the, the admin session. Was the one that we did right after Bill Gates. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm leading up to it. I'm oh, you're doing a different story it, than me. I'm leading up to the story. I'm, I'm leading up to the next story. Yeah. So because uh, I'm not able to keep up. My bad. <laughs> so so we're in this room, and this was the big coming out. We were, so we had been working on our slide deck, and this might come as a shock to some of you. Shane and I might get our slide decks in a little late. Sometimes, sometimes that happens. And so we're on that big stage. It was one that Bill Gates had spoke on and all that. So they do the slides a little differently there. You give them your slide deck. They actually control the slides from in the back so that you can't miss any of your cues at the front. So we get up on stage, huge room, literally thousands of people. Yes. We start the slide deck. It's the wrong slide deck. Yes. So we went to the slide that was going to say, hey, Todd works for SharePoint 911. And instead it said, Todd works for the place he used to work at. So here we are, and freaked out. Well, we didn't freak out. Well, I think we did a good job. I don't think the average attendee knew. But we both, we saw, because we had the monitors down below the stage, and we, we looked at that, and we kind of looked at each other, and, oh, oh, boy. <laughs> well, so the problem was, A, it was the first time we presented that content. Yep. But we had admin one and admin two, like, back-to-back. -back, 
And we, right before, literally 10 minutes before, we had split the deck again into a new way. So we were ready with that split. That split kind of clicked for us. We're good. Now we get into this deck, and we don't know what slides yep. are in the deck or not. You can't preview, right? We have no control. So we literally just kind of had to wing it slide <laughs> by slide. The slide to come up like, oh, yeah, we'll talk about that now. Sure. So, so that happened on, like, the Monday, whatever the first day was. So we decided, well, we're not going to fall for that anymore. We're going to do our own slides, and yep. there's no way it can bite us. We will run our own slides, and there's nothing can go wrong. So our next session is this patching session. Yep. So Shane's got his laptop up. We got the VM going. We're going to show some stuff, and we're running our own PowerPoint on our own our own machine. So nothing. So session starts at 4:30, 4:29. We're like, let's be ready to go. Shane hits F5 to full screen the PowerPoint, and the machine blue screens right in front of us. And so I'm like, well, time to give away a book. <laughs> so off I go. And just wait over Shane's trying to log in, one thing's up. It was, uh, man, that yeah. was rough. That was, that was show treated us so bad. And that was another one the audience had no idea because the way that KVM worked, as soon as our machine blue screen, it just switched over to the, the background thing. And so they had no idea. They didn't see it and they hadn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you know, presenting with a co presenter is very difficult. I don't ever Especially wanna... when it's him. Oh my God. I'm the smart one and the good looking one, let's be clear. Neither of that is true. Look at how pretty I look today. You know, the nice I hair think it starts. speaks for itself. I am noticing though, being this close to you, you don't have nearly as many gray hairs as I'm, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm getting... You see this? I just going to cut them out. So, yeah, I, I pluck them. Yeah. Um, not anymore. But, uh, you know, it's very difficult to do, but if you, but when bad stuff happens, if you go through calm under pressure, it's like, hey, Todd, you're going to do something else right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to play this computer, yep. and i got to play some Angry Birds or something over here, guys, and uh, yep. we've, we've saved your bacon a few times. It's, it's, yeah, it's come up. It's, uh, boy, that was, that was a rough conference. <laughs> it was back to back, two in a row, that just, oh. But that was, uh, yeah, that was 3,000 people in that one room. You said Gates or whoever just warmed it up for us. Yeah, Gates and then Arpon, I think, had one. And then Gates was all morning, Arpon, and then we had the one after him. You had those big bright lights in your face. It was. Well, the key is if you stand on the front of the stage and the lights kind of hit you here and then you can actually see out there and be like, oh, look, there's Lori. It's usually a little in the audience. There's Lori. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we've had some fun. I don't even remember how we started talking about that. Um, yeah. So we, but we've got more, uh, more catastrophes. Well, that would be a fun one to talk about sometimes. All the things you screwed up, and I've uh, to maintain a professional edge. And... Shane sucks. <laughs> so many, so many. But anyway, if you've got a server that's missing some service instances, <laughs> oh, that's what I'm talking install about. Install SP Service Enter. If your upgrade fails, reboot SQL for yeah, doing there, there, there we go. There we go. Speaking of SQL, again, another thing that I wanted to talk about last week but forgot was support for SQL 2014. So SQL 2014 has been out for a couple of months now. Support for that wasn't added to SharePoint until SharePoint 2013, until the April CU. Right. So yep. last, so a few months ago. I've got one of those running. Seems fine. No, uh, no issues. But if you do want to use SQL 2014, make sure you've got the April uh, See you. And the rules haven't changed on that. You can have multiple servers, you know, content databases on one, BI stuff on another. You can still mix and match and do yeah. that, uh, all that fun stuff. Well, speaking of CUs, I mean, it's middle of September. August should be coming out any day now. Right? Well, that's, we're, we're coming up on this. So oh, we might, we might well, I can't read the notes. Don't, I don't want your excuses. Um, so, yeah, so talking about that. So, Microsoft, you know, a couple of months ago here, they surprised us with a July cumulative update. Yeah. July, not normally a even numbered month, but they, they pulled it off somehow. And so now the SharePoint patches come out on Patch Tuesday. And they've done that three months in a row now. They've actually hit it. August, a little rough. Um, so normally we get the patches that you install, you know, and I've got a funny story about that too. Ask me about the patch installation of this. Good times. Make me a note. Yep. Um, so normally we get the EXE, and then for SharePoint 2013, we get a bunch of CAD files. Yep. You run it and just patches everything. In August, they had a problem with all that. So instead of not releasing on Patch Tuesday, they just threw all the individual patches out. <laughs> Great idea. Guys. And hilarity ensued. So I remember back in the day we had one patch. And then they read this, so you got to download two files, you know, the EXE and the CAD, and everybody got all upset. Two files, this will never work. In August, if you had Project Server, it was seven files. Seven files you had to download. The foundation patch was separate. There was five, five server patches and then a project patch. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty messy, but 
they wanted it out on Patch Tuesday, so they did it. So Patch Tuesday was last Tuesday, so we got our September cumulative updates, and they're out now. I don't have the number in my notes, but uh, I've installed them on a couple of farms. Seem to go pretty well. Haven't had any problems. Um, and I don't have a, I, can't, I don't have my notes. I don't have the stuff that it, that they added, but it fixed some stuff. I'll talk about that. Maybe a blog post or something. But so far, pretty stable. Is there an OA patch in there as well? There was not an OA patch this month. Okay. And I don't know if there was last month either, honestly. Last month, August patches. So the August patches, not only were they just this completely weird thing we've never seen before, it happened while I was on vacation. So I was kind of in a place that had little to no internet. Where is your dedication? <laughs> Apparently not in Cambria, California. Um, so I didn't, didn't see a uh, photo VA patch, but I should go back and look for one of those. That's good. good thing. So any stories about patching? Oh, yes. So um, thanks for bringing that up. As a matter of fact, I do. Just. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I, the patching story has been kind of wonky the last few months. We had that whole service pack one. Oh, never mind, not the service pack. Right. Okay, now service pack one. It looks exactly like the broken service pack one, except the symptom is you can't patch it. So I put on a number of blog posts, but I think I pretty well have it nailed. Uh, and we'll go, let's go over that right now. So if you installed the very first version of service pack one that came out, it would install and everything would be happy, but you could never install another patch. <laughs> Small little problem, little thing. Can't ever install another patch. If you installed a fresh machine from the volume license or MSDN ISO, right. then it would work. And it would look identical to a machine that you had upgraded, which is awesome. Um, so then they, they pulled Service Pack 1 and they re-released Service Pack 1. And if you had a faulty Service Pack 1 box, the fix was to install the good Service Pack 1, which would also look exactly like a bad Service Pack 1. And, I mean, there subtle differences, a couple of KB articles, but you really had to look. You really had to know what you were looking for. But again, the symptom of the problem was you tried to install a patch and it didn't work. Yep. And, and I, and I uh, double checked that on a couple of systems where I installed Service Pack 1 right away. It just gave you some error message that said the installation failed. Very helpful. Nothing, nothing to it. Okay. So, had some blog posts on that. Pretty well got that ironed out. Got an email this weekend from a buddy of mine, Dave Mann. He's a SharePoint MVP, developer out of Philadelphia, I believe. Heard of him? Good, good guy, known him for years. And he says, hey, I've got this SharePoint farm I'm building for a customer. Trying to install the July CU, it will install. Just get this thing that says patch field. So I'm reading this email, I'm like, oh, he's got the service pack one. He's like, I don't have the bad service pack one. I verified it, I reinstalled, or I redownloaded service pack one. I reinstalled it on top. I looked at your blog post. It looks like the right one. Yeah. Aww. He's like, but the service pack won't install. Yeah. I'm like, it's, it's got it. But, you know, I've, I've played with this a bunch, and I've talked to a bunch of people. It's been completely consistent the entire time. I'm like, it's something. So check your media, because he said he installed it from the media. I'm like, check to make sure there's nothing in that updates folder. Because with service pack one, the service pack itself was fine. It was the installation of the service pack that broke some stuff. So if you didn't slipstream it, then it couldn't break it. Uh, he's like, no, I installed from that media. It just fails. I'm like, dude, I don't know what to tell you. you know. Uh, and he said, well, I could tear the farm down. I'm like, well, you don't have to tear the farm down, because it's not the databases that are bad. It's the box. I said, so build another box. Use that media, and he's like, well, I would, but that's how I did it the first time. So he's like, I'm going to do the exact same thing and expect different results. And I'm like, I I don't know what to tell you. It sounds like you're doing everything right. So I got an email from Dave this morning. Never mind. I figured it out. So I'm like, what was it? Come on. You can tell me. It's okay. so, so in his defense, he's a developer. So, so my expectations for him are really low. I mean, just super low. He can tie his shoes, and that's, you know. Um, and he had been busting his butt on this thing. And he, he was, so he had downloaded the July cumulative update and saw the three files, the EXE and the two CAD files. Went, I think they just need the first one and just download the one file. <laughs> but the, the, the stinky thing is it gives him no help other than the installation failed. That's all it told him. And so he was looking at the ULS logs, you know, nothing, no symptom other than the installation failed, which is exactly what it looks like if you got the officers. Back. Well, that, and that's the problem with an error message like that, right? For the next 10 years when people search for SharePoint, the installation failed, and it pointed back to the service pack issue that is not going to be a thing in two years, but yep. for the next 10 years, it's going to be the number one thing on Google. Yep. Um, Maybe people no. use Bing and they don't have this problem. I, yeah. 
because they won't find it at all. <laughs> she won't be there. Lots of pictures of pandas and stuff when you when you come to the front page. Oh, look, at, look at Bing. Bing. Bing loves me. Bing is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. Bing is. Uh, I will press the button. It's, it's a gorgeous. Uh, yeah, we're gorgeous catching thing. fire over here. Uh, so so that was and, and I did talk to Dave. He he gave me permission to use his name and tell his story. So that was very brave of him. And to belittle him for being a developer and being ugly and all those things. Yeah, yeah. It all, it's all that's a package deal. It's, <laughs> gotcha. Uh, yeah, you, you, uh, but that was an interesting thing. So I guess kind of the moral to take away from that is, yeah, that, that error message does not just mean source back one is goofed up. Um, download all the files. You really do need them all. And it's big now. I mean, that, that patch is huge. It's three files. The uh, September was three files. So that damn unexpected error, right? I mean, it's just... <laughs> Oh, yep. Someone, someone should work on error message naming. Yep. So have you ever, have you coded enough to understand why it says that? Does that make sense to you? Have I coded enough? To like understand? like PowerShell and all that kind of stuff. No. No. So so what's happening in the background? And it's not make it doesn't make it any less mock worthy. <laughs> it's pretty mock worthy. But when you're when you're trying something, you've got these try catch yep. things. So basically, what unexpected error means: the developer wanted to do a thing. And knew there were six ways this thing could go wrong, and they trapped for all six of those things. But whatever went wrong with you, they didn't expect. They don't know whether it was number seven or number eight. So we tried to expect some errors, and yours was one of them we just didn't expect. So once again, it's because developers aren't very smart. So. Well, I think it all comes back. Right? All of our problems. Uh, if I were to try catch loop, I would catch for all the different ways it would break, not just six. Well, okay. and we were, so we were uh, trying furiously to get this netcast we were earlier, and I was getting this error from Camtasia that said, your camera's in use. <laughs> but it wouldn't tell me by what, and I just rebooted the box. I think that's what caused the F-bomb, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it might have been. It might have been. Um, yeah. So Joanne Klein is saying in the, in the, in the patch room. <laughs> in the patch room? There was a patch room? In the chat room, a good callback that uh, patching SharePoint is like the yeah, Sisyphus and the stone thing. So she got it. It's, it's Sisyphusian. I'm pretty sure that's how you pass. I want to make a really bad joke right you now. I'm letting go. Family environment. Yeah. I'm letting go. You can't say that stuff. I, oh. Yeah. You yeah. threw the top ball. You, you said, here she. <laughs> yeah. It's slow right over the plate. Mm -hmm. I went, oh. No, can't do it. Okay, fine. Change the subject before I go back to it. Uh, so thanks to Dave Miana. So um, <laughs> thanks to Dave for letting us make fun of you. Yep. What are we looking at time wise over there? Really, like forty five minutes. Thirty two. Thirty two. Okay, so we got a couple of things, uh, non SharePoint things. First off, we all of us in this room are proud owners of Windows Phone eight point one. Wow. And Shane is a convert. Would you like to tell the fine folks what I was able to strong arm you into today? Apparently. I now can wave my fingers over my thing and I use Glance. Yep. Is that Glance. And so now here's what mine looks like. So I've got my nighttime set earlier. So oh. that's the little red thing. So Shane has uh, a 1020 and has Windows Phone 8.1. The world's greatest. Uh, and had never used Glance. I still don't think I'm convinced. Let's yeah. be clear. So one of, the, one of my laments, uh, so my phone before, well, when I went to work for SharePoint 901, I had a Palm Trio Pro. The Palm Trio Pro ran Palm OS, which was, you know. But but that phone had two killer features that I just loved. Loved, loved, loved. One of them was it had a switch on the top, a hardware mute switch. Yes. So if I walked into a meeting, I could reach my hand in my pocket and flip that switch and the phone would never make a beep. Loved that. The other thing that it had was when it wasn't on, the screen had like a, a dim time in the background. So I could just pull my phone out of my pocket, see the time was, and put my phone back in my pocket. I gave both of those things up when I moved to Android and Windows Phone. So Glance is kind of like that. So for those of you who have Windows Phone 8.1, and most phones do it, I think the icon doesn't do it. I think the icon screen doesn't do it. But Glance is this thing where the phone is sleeping like Shane's is now, the screen is off, but you can tell it to peak, that's the setting that you want. And the phone will light up the, the screen just enough to show you the time and then whatever else you tell it to put. So you've got, you've got your calendar, I've got my email. Uh, so, and, and the, the great thing about it is just the act of pulling out of your pocket is enough to trigger it. Right. You can just reach in, pull it out, it's easy to you put it back in. And then the other thing that it has is this night mode, which I've got. So I'm an early, uh, well, you can't see that. Anyway, so you can tell it um, to be like a clock. And I've got mine set to red and it's very dim. Uh, and it's a great feature. So that's under settings, glance. Uh, take a look at that. Right now, I can like double tap. That is yet to work. There you go. There you go. Quadruple tap, right? So then it opens. So then 
Uh, so I did just update to 8.1 Cyan. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to point out one of the issues I'm having is OneDrive doesn't work. I don't know if you can really tell in there. But if you see the OneDrive icon is kind of grayed out, oh. if I click on it, nothing happens. And if I go over to this screen and find or is it OneDrive right there and click, nothing happens as well. Um, this is apparently an issue. It's on the internet. Uh, quite a few people have got it. They haven't figured out how to fix it yet. Um, and unfortunately, with 8.1, OneDrive is now an app. There's not an app anymore. Nope. It's baked into the OS. So I can't uninstall and reinstall like we used to with 8.0. Yep. Um, so that's an interesting issue that I've been trying to fight my way through recently. So is it only 1020 folks that are having this problem or everybody? It seems to be a pretty random group of everybody. Interesting. So Shane and I were talking about this over uh, supper, dinner. What the hell supper? <laughs> we have this conversation all the time. Supper? Uh, I, I don't understand. Well, there's a lot of things you don't understand. Um, but discussing this over the last meal of the day that we had. Thank you. And my suggestion to him was wiping the phone to see if that would fix it. And one of the things in, that we talked about, and I've talked last week about how the fact that I wipe my phone like every afternoon at three for a while just because I'm an idiot. But when you wipe your phone, a bunch of stuff gets backed up to OneDrive. Of course, it probably wouldn't for you. <laughs> I hadn't really thought about that piece of it. Um, like your apps and your passwords and all that kind of stuff. Um, and if the app, if the people that write an app take advantage of it, all the settings and all that kind of stuff can get written up there. So when you do your, your uh, reset, you know, we're using the Nokia recovery tool. Log in as yourself. It's just going to pull all this stuff back yep. in. All your, your, like your start screen and all that. But a few of your apps do not do that. And which apps are those? My games. Yeah. I play a lot of phone games, to be yeah. honest. So that is one of the things. And I don't play a lot of phone games. But I did notice a couple of my apps didn't save their settings. But that's one lament that I've heard from people is the phone, the games don't store their high scores and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so be careful of that if you do play your phone. Well, so speaking of phone backups and switching versions, um, so when I went from 8 to 8.1 developer preview, I tried to use the backup in developer 8.1 preview. My backups kept failing. They'd get like 90% and they would just bomb out and nothing would happen. It turns out that if you have a previous version's backup out there, it won't let you put a new backup out there. So I had to manually delete my 8.0. The manage backups. Yep. Yeah. So that's a key thing when you start, if you guys get in these upgrade cycles, if you're having problems getting the backup procedures to work, it's usually you have to delete the old one because it's a mismatched version. So it's interesting because I did the other thing and it did work. Um, I had 8.1 developer preview, did a backup, wiped my phone back to 8.0. <laughs> and yeah, I, it was, there must have been like a, a gas leak in my house or something that way. <laughs> um, and then it was fine. I mean, everything came up. It didn't see the backup. I couldn't restore the backup. Right. Um, but then I, uh, so I think I did an upgrade of that or backup of that. I don't remember. But then I upgraded up, and that was another thing. So I upgraded back to the same build, but there's no way to trigger or restore. So I had to reset the phone to get back to that backup that I'd made before. Good thing you rebuild it every every day three. Every day three. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I do. So. <laughs> then, and, and right now the score is Indianapolis 20, Philadelphia 6. Oh, that's not good. I'm Sean McCoy, I need you to score some points, buddy. Um, and you're going to jail for that update. So the, the biggest update with 8.1 uh, that I've really enjoyed, though, is that I added the, uh, or sorry, with 8.1 Cyan, Mike, I need the firmware updates. Oh, yeah. Um, is it added the, uh, the, low, the low energy Bluetooth support because yep. my phone has a device, so I can sync my Fitbit to my phone now. That's pretty sweet. I... I have yeah. to admit that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so that's yeah. that's one thing, and I talked about this a little last week. We all had 8.1. If you load the developer preview, you get 8.1, but you don't get the firmware and you don't get the drivers. Yeah. And that was one of the things that uh, the, the Cyan thing did get you. So you had all the same apps, but now you have these drivers. So the 1020 has two cool things that we were lamenting at dinner. <laughs> Number you. one, that low energy Bluetooth. That you've got, because I've got a Fitbit also, and I've got the Fitbit app, but they can't, they can't see each other. Yeah. Um, the other thing that your phone has now is the wireless display. Yeah. So if you've got a 1020 or a 1520 and a Miracast device, a little $40 thing at uh, Amazon or whatever, you can wirelessly send your video from the phone to a TV, which is pretty cool. Yes. Uh, Net Netflix or whatever, or pictures of your kids, whatever, just zap them on that. 
I can do that with my 920 with a USB cable to a computer, but I can't do it wirelessly, which kind of sucks. Because I do have a couple of the Miracast boxes for my Surface and all yeah. that. And then is there, um, isn't there an 8.1 developer preview 2 or something now? If you have, so you can get Cyan, right. I don't remember what the build number is, and that is 8.1 something. Yes. If you're in the preview for developers, there is at least one patch past that. Yeah. Uh, because I had my, because I've got a 520 as my backup phone, and before I started you know, wiping my 920 every afternoon at 3, my 920, which I hadn't touched yet, was at a newer build than my 520, which right. was stock. 8.1. So yeah, there is. A, so that's that's kind of the workflow. If you do the wipe on your phone, it puts 8.1 on, get everything, you know, restore your thing, and then reinstall the preview for developers, run it, agree to it, and then it's in the update. And the, uh, the Nokia app is really good. So um, I bricked my, uh, this guy, when he got the over-the-air update, just just bricked, wouldn't turn on, blue screen of death. I was like, there's no way that they're ever going to connect to it. And sure enough, the app worked. Um, it was able to connect to a brick phone and put me all back together. And I just want to say, <sighs> the shame was out on Twitter crying oh. about how his phone was bricked. He was getting ready to get rid of it, get an <coughs> iPhone, just give the whole thing. Yeah, I was one of the first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the, what was my very first suggestion? I had but, already but, done it. Go ahead and tell the, you look you at the camera. Download the stupid app that mm -hmm. I already downloaded. And then, and then do what? Then do and then connect to it and see what happened. Mm -hmm. and, and what ended up being the fix? Again, can you remind the folks at home? Um, I boiled some chicken eggs. Is that, <laughs> is that what you did? Did the, uh, did the dance and, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. Whatever. Todd's great. Todd's the best. I love Todd. Uh, put that down for the show notes. <laughs> uh, Todd is the greatest, um, 4122. Apparently, there's a gas leak in this room as well. <laughs> if I'm saying those type of things, I'm not uh, yeah. um, so, so, a lot of good stuff. So, if you've got the, win the Windows Phone platform, has really, really matured a lot. I remember you got a, a Windows 7 phone you know, the day they came out, and I mocked you mercilessly for it. And uh, look at me now. I know. I'm, I'm a year into this 920. And, uh, and you had that sweet Android. The battery lasted about 12 minutes. It was a solid 12 minutes. You I'm could, proud of that. You could get all the way over this other side of the room before you didn't plug back in. Well, in my phone's defense, you know, you had, there was no apps running on Windows. So there was nothing to drain the battery. My Android had all kinds of stuff rolling on it. It's a phone. I make phone calls. Hello, yep. Tokyo. Hello. Mm -hmm. And play uh, Plants vs. Aliens or Plants like vs. Zombies. I beat Plants vs. Zombies today. I downloaded it yesterday. No, yeah. nobody's impressed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, it's it's come along, and I, I really love the 1020. I just the only reason I haven't given up my 920 is the wireless charging. And I got little dots. Yeah, the dots are nice. The 1520, which is the one that's big, it's like yeah. the size of your surface here. If you get the non AT and T one, because those guys are jerks. If you get one from like Mexico or from Europe, then you can get the one that's got the wireless, the key wireless stuff. Does it have cocaine or something on it as well? I would, uh, I would prefer that answer. Uh, fair enough. Uh, but I know a couple of people have done that. You know, paid the full price, paid the six hundred bucks or whatever, gotten the fifteen twenty, uh, and again, it's it's huge, it's it's gigantic. But you can do the key stuff. But it doesn't have the cam. The camera is older. It's or thirteen or something. Yeah, like it's not as nice as that one. It doesn't have as much glass. Because you got that little bulb with all the glass. Yep. It doesn't have all that. Uh, but better than my actual. So, enough. yeah. I consider that that's a lot of money for a phone. Yeah. There's a lot of money for a phone. But that would be the way to get the wireless charging and all the cool you know, low energy Bluetooth and all that. But Microsoft's, or Nokia, I guess Microsoft has a bunch of new phones coming out here in the next few months. So we'll wait and see what those look like. But the problem is there's no clear winner. So I've looked at all of them that are coming out and there's nothing that's like the obvious next thing yeah. for me. So we'll keep an eye on it. My wife's Android phone is starting to die, having some problem with trying to talk her into Windows phone. So far I've been completely unsuccessful. So randomly enough, so uh, Nicola has a, uh, an S4 yep. uh, through Verizon. They sent her a letter the other day and said, bring it in and we'll give you any other phone for free. She gonna do? She gonna get the icon? Or? So she gonna get something. I mean, I don't know. I guess I don't know if there's a strong demand for those uh, on the you know the secondary market or what. I don't know why they want her phone so bad. I mean, I think they just want her to come in. It's like that thing I get from the car dealership. Well, there's a huge demand for your, and then like somebody's written in the kind of car that I have. You know, bring it in right now. We'll give you top dollar. Yeah, but I mean, it's not a. It's a targeted. It's I don't know. Hmm. I, mean, I, I, I maybe someone that's listening knows more about it. But it seems more like it's a. 
It's just not it's a blanket S4 promotion. S4. It's uh, they want the S4 for something. Interesting. Maybe they well, I'll have her go out to Gazelle or whatever and see what the resale value on it is. I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah. All right. So we got we talked about that. So one final thing, and this was something that uh, that impacted you a little more than me, but we've been hearing the last week or so that looks like Microsoft is going to buy Minecraft. Oh. Yeah. And uh, so your your oldest son for sure plays Minecraft. Absolutely loves it. My my two year old also knows how to play Minecraft. Yeah, my I haven't I've never played it, I've never seen it, so I don't uh, and and know anything about it. But but that's an interesting thing for a couple of reasons. Number one, the last last I read today, Microsoft was looking to uh, pay two and a half billion for Minecraft, which is not a big company. I mean it's not like Nokia. It's it's you know like thirty guys or yeah, something. Th yeah, I thought it was like five guys in a garage in Sweden. Um, and the interesting thing is the guy that wrote Minecraft and started the whole thing, uh, a guy whose nickname is Notch, I can't remember what his real name is, hates Microsoft, hates everything about it, and has basically said, as soon as I cash my check, I'm just going to go leave. <laughs> I'm going to disappear immediately. I want no part of any of this, and he's just going to be gone. Um, but the there's kind of two interesting things to talk about. Number one is why are they buying Minecraft? Well, I guess that's really both points. One of them is, you know, we, we've heard a lot about this lately, this whole idea of repatriating money and these tax shelters overseas and all that kind of stuff. And the thing about this is, you know, Microsoft's looking to pay two and a half billion dollars for Minecraft. But if they were to pull that, and that, that money is money that they've earned by selling things in Europe. Yep. Windows is huge in Europe, SQL, all that kind of stuff. Yep. SharePoint, I hear, is <laughs> Who would have thought? Yep. And so when they earn that money in Europe, it stays in Europe. If they want to bring it into the U.S., they have to pay corporate tax rates. It was like 40-some percent, something like that, close to 40 percent. So for them to take that $2.5 billion and bring it into the U.S., you know, they'd get a little over $1.5 billion, something like that. Or they can buy something in Europe for $2.5 billion and get $2.5 billion worth of use out of it. And so that's, that's kind of what's going on. And so we've seen that before. When they bought Skype, it was the same kind of deal because Skype was out of Lithuania or Estonia or something like yeah. that. Uh, Nokia, same deal. Nokia's out of Finland. And so some of these purchases, when you look at them, you're like, wow, that doesn't make a lot of sense. But if you start looking at the numbers and say, well, you know. You get a 40% discount. Right. Yeah, so they got Skype, which was kind of a weird thing. But again, they got you know got a great discount on it. It was in Europe. And so I think that, that comes into play with a lot of these kind of decisions. And the other thing is... The, the whole the youth thing, Minecraft is huge with, uh, you know, and just the video games and the Xbox and all that kind of stuff, I think it just shows their commitment to that, that kind of thing. Yeah, you wonder, you know, are they looking at it? So you remember Second Life, Second Life, right? I assume it's still out there somewhere. I don't know what it is, but I remember it, yeah. I heard yeah. It. It's, um, you know, you wonder, do they think Minecraft is maybe, a, you can say, another run at, uh, you know, trying to advertise inside of there and start to kind of, you know, use that as the engine. Maybe not change Minecraft, but use that same engine to start to... Hmm. Yeah. That's, that's another Second Life kind of deal. You know, I don't know. And I've never used mine, uh, Minecraft, so I don't know anything about it. But I was watching Windows Weekly last week, and Leo made uh, a reference that Minecraft was like Legos for this generation. Mm -hmm. But it's just... But it's but it's social Legos. You know, so, so your kid can be built to something, but, you know, one of his cousins from, you know, a thousand miles away can be in there watching. Yep. And can see it. So it, it's like social Legos. So I think that's kind of the thing they're going for is that, that interaction. Hope I'm in real. Yeah, I mean, it'd be fascinating. I know the uh, the Minecraft community is very scared. I think the, it's mostly written in Java, the so, computer yeah. version. Yep. And so they're afraid they're going to switch it to .NET. I, I can't imagine Microsoft is going to go through that effort. I mean, you know. I've been surprised before, but I, I feel like some of the fear that's on the internet right now is kind of unfounded. Yeah, it's it's an odd coupling. Again, the the the, the owner of Minecraft Notch has just been so outspoken in his hatred for Microsoft forever <laughs> that it seemed like a joke that that. But I, I guess if somebody comes waving two billion dollar checks under your nose, you start reconsidering. <laughs> There's not a lot I wouldn't do for two that's, billion dollars. Yeah, you know, or twenty dollars for that matter. Yeah. Um, so it'll be fun. History's been any good, yeah. Um, but but the Java thing is interesting because I don't know about you, but I just refuse. Well, you, obviously you have to. But I refuse to install Java. It's just horrible. It seems like every you know every day there's a new patch, and every time you patch Java, it tries to install the Ask toolbar, change your browser, shave your cat, and it does all these horrible things. Do you remember the Java virtual machine that Microsoft shipped for like a couple years? It just worked so until they got their pants sued off by those crybabies at Oracle. Yeah. Yeah. But so my kids only play on uh, the Xbox. Oh, so you don't. Oh, well, I didn't say only. Mostly, so they play on the Xbox, but then they play on the iPad as well. 
The iPad version is kind of neat, though. They spin it up on um, in the house, so on the internet, connect to the wireless. Then my other kid, my two-year-old, can bust open the uh, the Android device, and because they're both on the same network, they can actually play together. Without going out to the yeah, it's I. There's some magic that, and like I said, my five-year-old, my two-year-old, they know how to do it, but I, I can make the Xbox version work. I built some cool stuff with that. But it's, uh, I might have to check it out. It, uh, it's neat. Uh, I'm sure you've seen like the thing stories about guys building like a working hard drive in Minecraft yeah. and. The, you know, if you're into logic and the physics engines, or not the physics engines, but the, you know, the on-off engines binary. and stuff, binary, thank you. Um, you. You can build whatever you want, whatever you're smart enough to build. Yeah, good stuff. Um, so share point, Tim. So that's how my cat got shaved, exactly. Um, so that, that'd be cool. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, I might check it out. So again, we're here at SP TechCon. One of the crazy things that happened is, you know, you have a bunch of SharePoint nerds ascend on a hotel. Yes. And you're, you're bound to uh, get some cool stuff. And so Shane and I just happen to be neighbors. Um, so I apologized in advance for all the noise. He woke me up from my nap. I was taking a nap when he checked in. He woke me up like, Meh. Yep, yep. Um, and so we were kind of talking. <laughs> In, uh, about the different, our rooms are right next to each other, mm-hmm. and my room is much bigger than, than, than his. And so I was in his room earlier, and we were talking about that, so I think his room is analogous to yours. Lori, what was your big complaint about your room? No closet and no luggage rack. No, no closet and no luggage rack. So, interesting thing about that, Shane and I are in his room. His room, I assume, is the same as yours. Well, and you've got a door, though, right? You've got a, There's a weird door. A yeah. weird door. So it let's, isn't locked so let's, myself. So let's tell the story. Her room does not have a closet, but it has a weird door that does not lock from the outside. Now, what do we think that door might be? What could be behind that door? Well, you know, so I have that same weird door. You do not. Did you open that weird door where the monsters? Technically, you opened it. That's true. And what did we find behind that weird door that does not unlock? It was a closet. Get out of here. It was a closet. What was in that closet when we looked in there? There was an ironing board. An ironing board, okay. A, a luggage rack. A luggage, oh my goodness. A hanger. A and- hanger. So we think your room actually has a closet. And you've just been afraid to open the door. I've been jiggling it. And well, you have tried to open it? I've tried to open it five times. So you have to turn so it up. Turn it up. It makes turn, noise when I... Turn around. <laughs> and then pull. You can't pull and then turn. No. Turn. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I know you're gonna love that expression. Because it was, because he was, and when we're seeing it, I'm like, that sounds like the same door that. And, but the thing was, it was, it's on the, the shared wall. So I mean, I knew my room was on the other side. I knew there was. I'm like, what is behind this door? I must have. Oh, mm-hmm. luggage rack and some hammers. <laughs> I'll be doing. I need more count. Must go out of here. Yep. Um, so we had to pull that out. Yeah, I mean, this is the value the show brings. Yep. We educate people how to open closets. Exactly. Uh, and the rooms are very tiny, uh, very cozy. Yeah. We like to talk about uh, all that. They've got a, a nice big 40 inch, you say? T- yeah, even 40. Uh, sitting on a stand that's about seven and a half inches wide. It doesn't wobble at all. <sighs> when you walk past it, you know, inches from it because the room is. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's not not bad. Uh, right down the street from where we have been last time, it's kind of in the heart of downtown here. There's Ben and Jerry's right out of the front door. Oh, it's delicious, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shane and I may have already partaken in Ben and Jerry's, so it's uh, it's good times. Um, so I think that was really it that we had. We've shamed Lori. We made fun of her on the shaved Dave and me. Huh? <laughs> yeah, shaved it. We're pretty much burning bridges. Yeah. Uh, we shaved a cat. We shaved a cat. It had a comment, you know. We're thinking good. That's going to be a wrap. All right. All right. Um, so then, so doing the, the self-promotion thing next week, I'm going to be out. I'm going to be in Chicago. You guys get me. You get me. Have to suffer through him. Uh, the week after that, going to be in Stockholm. You get me. But the week after that, uh, so October you whatever. You get me. <laughs> well, maybe we'll do the hangout then. And we'll, uh, Four we'll, weeks in a row, they might revolt. Your audience viewership yeah, might be zero at that might, point. Uh, it's probably getting close to that, honestly, anyway. Uh, but I think that's kind of it. I think conference season's winding down. We're coming up on the holidays. And, Thank goodness. Yep, it's, uh, it's getting there. So... Yeah. Um, so thanks to everybody in the chat room. It's, it's late. We screwed up horribly. and uh, Way past my bedtime. Way past, yep. Uh, we got a session first thing tomorrow morning. So uh, for those of you that are going to be at SB TechCon, I don't know if there's anybody out there, but uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow.
you'll have to put up with this joker next week. And uh, I think that's everything. So hopefully I'm going to hit stop recording and we're actually going to recording on this end. <laughs> Blue screen's about to happen, folks. Blue screen's All about right. to happen. So uh, good night, and you'll have to see him next week. See you guys. See ya.